ambulance service. There's a patient breathing. She's in labour. Every minute of every day, the ambulance service answers our cries for help. From the crews on the ground saving lives. One, two, three. Just keep going. To the staff in control, making the split second decisions on who should get help. I've got another cat one. I hope to God that's not real. <laughs> God, this is crazy. The Northeast Ambulance Service delivers emergency care for the 2.7 million people of Newcastle and beyond. Oh, no. We're coming as fast as we can. We've got multiple crews travelling. Oh, we've got you. We've got you. We're going to look after you. This is the story of how both the region and the service that cares for them are struggling to bounce back through the most testing times. We are one big ambulance service. One big family. Saving lives, breaking hearts, helping little old ladies across the road. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's arms. Welcome to the North East. What's the problem? What it is, I work for the A19 highways, mm -hmm. and somebody's just drove the wrong way up, up the slip road. He's jumped out, screamed for ambulance. Right. He's taking tablets and all sorts of jumping about. Well, like an overdose? I don't know. I don't know. I'm not getting out. So does he look confused or something then? Yeah, confused. He's definitely confused. Yeah, free to wait. Are you receiving us over? Yes, I am. Go ahead. Yeah, so it's come through on the A66 to Darlington from A19 southbound. The taxi response, patient has drove car onto the wrong side of the road, jumped out of the vehicle, and he's taking tablets. He seems very confused, over. Yes, thanks very much, Claire. Uh, you can show us mobile to that, thank you. That is, uh... That's quite the information on that one. Middlesbrough 328, Ollie and James are the nearest available ambulance. They are eight minutes away. Is he in a safe location or not? Is it like the, is it a bit? Oh, it's close, to, it's close to your slip road, so if he wants to go on the slip road, we can't stop him. There's nothing to do with him. Would you be willing to go out to where he is? Yeah, he's a big lad. Is he, mate? Yeah. There's an incident response vehicle up there. Two minutes then. James is just going to do some checks. And I'm just going to have a chat with the police. Just disclosed. To be fair, mental health issues. He's also disclosed he's took uh, cannabis. I don't know if he's took anything else. Right. Uh, but just give him a check out if he's, he's coming with us. Um, so I was going to be in the question. So is he coming with you for section four? And then if, if he, there's no need, medical needs to go. You don't need to take him away. Right. The, the so you want, just with essentially us. want me to clear him yeah, for custody? Right. We'll it's check him right. over. If he's clinically fit, I'll clear him for custody. Um, if not, we'll have to take him, no, no, James Club. Yeah, 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 that's fine. Right. Let's just start from the beginning. Right, what, br what brought you here today? As in, this, this situation? I was arrested last night. OK. The criminal damage was smashing my best friend's window. Because I started feeling nervous and anxious. <laughs> I banged on about 30 doors. OK. No one answered. You yeah, got water? Get you some water. How are you? I've got cyclical vomiting syndrome, rare disease. You've got what, sorry? Cyclical vomiting syndrome, CBS, it's rare. Right. Not a lot of people know about it yet, but. It's a new one for me. I need help, mate. Okay. So. Good. Tell us what's happened then. What, what... I died last night and I saw a lot of things, yeah? Okay. Someone pulled a gun out of me on the bike. The police didn't believe me. I jumped in the back of the police van. I've been rushed into hospital about 46 times. All right. In the past four years. Okay. Maybe more. Yeah. Okay. You put um, a defibrillator in my chest to build a machine, and stick on and get me a tracing it. Oh. We'll do an ACG. Thank you. Thank you. Yep, right. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. Let's, let's do the thing. All right, okay. Let's just do that now, but just listen to me, yeah? I'm listening. Don't worry. I'm in control, mate. Right, so. so just give us. I wrote a book in two and a half hours, 6,000 <laughs> words. I'm going to read it, yeah? I'm going to buy it for 2 99 Two ninety nine. Right. Yes, that's it. All right, mate. Yeah. Right, come on, then. This is all better, mate. Listen, do us a favour. Yeah, yeah. I know you're a bit worried about everything. 
So, <clears throat> is, do, you, you, do you use any drugs or anything? Is that why someone might be chasing you? Or do you use any alcohol? Or I don't drink, I haven't drunk for four years. Okay. The only drugs I do is cannabis because it's a healer. Okay. It helps me. Yeah. I'm going to be And? Have we had any cannabis today to help yeah, you heal? Yeah, of course. Yeah? Oh, my heart, man. A little bit quick. Yeah, it's going a bit quick. So, um, I just want to get to the bottom of what, what, what we're worrying about today. What's, what's worrying you? Because what, what I'm seeing is you're quite up there at the minute and you seem pretty worried about something. So I just want to just double check. Anxious. Man. Okay. What is it? Is, it, is this because oh, someone's after you? Or... Someone's after me. There's hundreds of people around me. So let's be 100, yeah? Yeah. Any Coke? No. Any Brown? No. Good for years. Happy days. Right. Have you had any, any mental health teams or anything? I had an appointment. Yeah, yeah. At Parks Road. Right. That's why I drove crazily around the roundabout world all the wrong way around there in that car. Oh, right. Oh, I was just, just trying to find out. I was trying to find out where it was. Where I was getting going. lost. Yeah. Yeah. And then, but I was using my maps and video at the same time. Right. And taking pictures. Okay. Can you just stand to with yeah, uh, yeah. my mate there? Um, I'm just going to have a word with uh, mental health. I think he's in the midst of a crisis. Yeah, but he's tested um, positive for 5 a Right. He's got cannabis on him. OK. So... His heart rate's up. Other than that, everything seems all right. But in terms of sort of um, connection with reality, he's far removed. Yeah, oh, yeah. It's been a really rough. We will do what we need to do. Yeah. We need to go as we are, James Cook. Cool. Get the medical Let me just get a, have a chat then, and yeah. then I'll, um, I'll let you know what we're going to do. Yeah, cheers. I just want to pick your brains quickly. So we've been called um, via police to uh, A19 southbound um, for a guy who's driven his car the wrong way uh, on up an exit slip road and then has been found with sort of uh, delusions of reality. From my point of view, it's more about, it's not a medical emergency, but it's a mental health emergency. I'm just trying to basically see if I'm on the right track of... Is that last night? Yeah. 4 or 3 a.m. Sorry? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, right. Still your best mate? Find out. You need help. Yeah, yeah. That's fine, yeah. OK, thank you very much. Cheers. Thanks, then. Bye, bye, bye. So... In terms of mental health, acute mental health assessments, is, is that facilitated at custody? custody? So basically, what I can, what, now I've made that phone call, I can essentially clear him for custody on the basis that he's going to get yeah, an... Yeah, 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 on yeah. the basis that he's immediately going to have a mental health crisis assessment. Yeah. So that would be a mental health nurse, a practitioner and a doctor. I would have to be happy and confident that he's going to have that. Yeah. To see what's so, if that comes back as yes, then I can release you to custody and we'll travel to custody with you. Right. Um, and I'll speak to the LD um, and the mental health team when I get there to explain why I think he needs the assessment. If not, go from there. and we'll go from there. Right, yeah, go. all right. Don't want to go and sell it. You need help with it. Right, do us a favour. Close your eyes for me. What I want you to try and do for me is I want you to just try and kind of get to somewhere in your mind that's like nice and chilled out. Joy. Yeah, just somewhere a little bit settled. Autism, I diagnosed myself. I'm autistic. autistic. Oh yeah, it's not an illness, bro. It's a super pill. Uh, mate. <laughs> you've got to adapt. Oh. You've got to adapt to take your life. Trust me. Oh, yeah. You'd be assessed as our duty of care. Yeah. Before being released or before we're taken away. But it's not a case of we can hand it over to LND, you're not handing it to LND, we're handing it to... So no, I, I need to discharge him to the mental health uh, or the LD team. Yeah, so he said, that, that's not, unfortunately, that's not how it works. You can't, because yeah. of custody, so... Right, we'll, we'll, go James we'll, have go to, we'll have to go to hospital. Yeah. So, you got a big decision to make now. Who do you want in the back with you, me or James? Oh, you, you're autistic. Sorry, James. <laughs> better no, get the driver. Don't lie, you no. want me because I'm the better well, looking one of the two. <laughs> That's why, isn't it? Whatever makes you feel most comfortable. Just going to put a seatbelt on you, mate. Because the last thing you need is a £60 ticket for not having your seatbelt on, innit? 
<laughs> I think a lot of the time in mental health cases, people will reach out time and time and time again and they'll get nowhere and then they end up doing something extreme but they do it because that's their last resort to get somebody to just stop and listen to them. It's a bit gut-wrenching because as a paramedic, you want to do everything that you can do to try and get that patient the help they need. Are we good to go? Let's get you inside, eh? Middlesbrough free to eat. Um, just an update from. Absolutely. It's pretty been an interesting job, really. This patient was put through a bit of a mental health crisis. That's actually really sad. I feel so sorry for him if he's got mental health problems. But hopefully he's in the best place now. However, the hope so. He knew it was stupid. He knew what he was done wrong. But he was uh, he was desperate and. Probably really makes a difference. Huh? Yeah, I hope so. So is that you us finished now for the night? That is us finished tonight. Uh, and hopefully tomorrow's not so bad. Thanks very much for the day. It's been enjoyable working with you. Thanks. Let's go home. It's Monday morning. On shift today are dispatchers Claire and Rosie. Over here, this little delight. He's wearing a Middlesbrough football T-shirt, ginger hair, with his glasses around his neck. Oh, he sounds like my perfect man, that. My God. <laughs> Middlesbrough top on air. Claire will be responsible for allocating jobs to the 35 ambulances covering Teesside and the east coast of Cleveland. Oh, yeah, once I'm north of Sunderland, that's it. I'm not, I need a translator. <laughs> Good morning. How are you doing? Including Middlesbrough 330, Paul and Abbott. I'm ready for 12 hours with you lovely boys. <laughs> and crewmates Lois and Sammy. Hopefully it'll be a nice, easy day. Well, don't know, will you? <laughs> don't be like that, Sammy. <laughs> you attract it. I don't. But this is what we want, all the nanas today. <laughs> don't we? <laughs> but some nice nanas nice today. Nice nanas. Ambulance service, hello please. We request assistance please, you're female. And what's happened to you? She's been assaulted by her partner. Your face is bleeding and swollen, very shaky and trembling. She's got um, her lips bleeding. She's badly beaten up. Middlesbrough free for you. I've got an emergency call for you, so a female. Um, the calls come from the police, the patient's been assaulted over. <gasps> That's terrible. Yeah, that's all received. Thanks, Claire. Uh, we are mobile over. Lois and Sammy are 18 minutes away from the patient who's been assaulted. A bit early for an assault in the morning, isn't it? Unless it's happened last night. Yeah. I think it's nice that she gets two females as well. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Makes them feel more safe. Yeah, they? yeah, yeah. You don't generally see it, like, through the week on a morning time. Oh, there's an update. 331, go ahead, control. Police have been back on the phone just to advise it is a domestic assault and the suspect has known to be bitten officers previously, so just be careful when you're going in over. Oh, yeah, that's all received. Um, we'll give updates from scene if necessary, over. wonder if she's known to any services. No, I was just thinking that. I wonder if it's, like, a first or if it's, like, an ongoing thing, if he's already known to be violent. Uh, uh, so we've just got some more information. The assailant's not on scene. Oh, there's a police officer there. Hi. She's got, like, a welt below her eyes, started bleeding. She's got a bit of a welt up here. Right. Uh, she said she doesn't really want to go to hospital. Right, so OK. Well, we checking. can check her over, really. Yeah. It's the first, they've only been together a month. Come on. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Talk us through what's happened today. Right. Well, I've just yeah. walked round the corner and seen him, and he just flew at me. So obviously you've got this visible injury here. Is there any other injuries? Got got you right. And has he hurt you anywhere else? No, no, that's fine. Nowhere else on your body. No. We're going to do some checks and stuff. Okay. Is this the first time this has ever happened? What? This officer of him? 
Yeah. 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 I think that's like the only thing for us. That's no. Yeah. Yeah. And where did you get then? It just kicked me. It just like fly kicked me. I went flying across the room. Oh my god. You should have called us last night. Has the police caught him that night? You don't know where we went? No, no. She's absolutely shit. Yeah, you will be. It's awful, though, isn't it? It's a shock, isn't it? Yeah. Can I just have a little look at your face? Is it all right? It's that painful to touch on here. No. OK. Just feel around your head. Is it all right? Yeah. That's all. Right, so. She's got a hematoma and a head here as well. How are you feeling at the minute? Do you feel safe? No. Is there anywhere we can take you? I don't know. No, I'm going to stay here. Are you? Are you sure that you don't want to go to hospital to get checked out? Are you sure? Can we, can we clean you up and stuff? Is that all right? Yeah. Might sting a little bit, but it's just water. While Lois and Sammy assess whether it's safe to leave the victim at home, Ambulance services, patient breathing. In control, they are currently answering one emergency call every 21 seconds. Can you wake her up? Give her a shake. I can't wake her up. Okay. Is she breathing at all? No, she's not breathing at all. The ambulance has been organised. I'm just going to give you some advice and instructions, okay? Is everyone breathing in a way? You're not sure. Is it just the one person trapped in the car? Just the one. Just the one. They're trying to get him out of the milk. They're trying to get him out, but he is still actively trapped, is he? Aye, aye. Um, RTC, the, the car's in the water, the water's rising, but they're trapped. Hold on. That's him out now. He's, he's definitely out of the water now, is he? Aye, he's definitely out. Right. I'm with a male here who has taken an overdose. He's unsure of how many he's taken. He's taken at least one box. What's going on with these jobs today? I don't know. It's going to be one of these days, isn't it, on this desk? Paramedic Lois and clinical care assistant Sammy have now been on scene with their domestic assault patient for 15 minutes. Do you have contact details for anyone to get help for domestic violence? I've done it before. So you've been through this before? Yeah. Oh, God love you. So what I'd like to do on your behalf is put in a safeguard in. If that's OK, obviously, you need to consent to it. Um, and all we do is just raise an alarm, obviously, that you're vulnerable at the moment. Um, and off the back of that, someone will be in touch with you and, and they'll put some support and stuff in place. How does that sound? Does that sound all right? Yeah. yeah. Has he took your phone? No, so I dropped really it down to me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a bank for about two days. <laughs> <laughs> Rice fixes everything. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to go to the middle for now. I'm going to go get you a phone. So then you can have that phone, and then if you need the police, you can go straight away. All right. Thank you. Take care. Take yeah. care of yourself. Thank you. you. You can ring us back any time yeah. if you need us, all right? You know where we are if you do need any, any further support, all right? Hey, can I put a safeguard in, him, please? For domestic violence. Thank you. The North East has the highest reports of domestic abuse in the UK, with 10 victims every hour. So it. Oh, it's really sad. Like, she's the type of job that I'll go home and think about, you know. Yeah, like, is she all right? Did he you... come back? Is she all right? I feel like there's been a massive increase in massive. domestic violence. Yeah, it's shocking. It's stuff that like, we're going to nearly every shift now, isn't it? Yeah. It's nice that we can be there for, some, for them to talk to and open up. Not all yeah. of them want to, but a lot of them do, they trust us. People at work see me and Lois as a double act. Lois, I love her laugh more than anything. That just cheers me up. As soon as I hear that laugh, I'm like, oh, my God, here she is. We grew up in the same area. And what makes us best mates is that we both haven't had it easy and we can both support each other. That's what drew us both to the job. You know, having those life experiences draws you 
to making a difference in someone else's life. Ambulance service is the patient breathing. No. Right, get him out of the car and just get him on the ground outside, on the flat on his back. Flat on his back? Flat on his back, on the floor. That was the patient. 100. In the last hour, Control has received 196 calls. My mum's collapsed on the floor, I think she's having a heart attack. Thank you, are you calling for yourself or somebody else? My friend. For the last two days, she's done now to stand off. She's had chronic pain in her kidneys and she's been drawn. Middlesbrough 331. Yeah, I've got an emergency call for you. Um, I'm afraid it's a cat who responds. Um, it's a female, 27 year old who's called in. Patients complain of pain in her right side over. That's all we say, Sun Square. That's brilliant, thank you. We're going left at the next set. Thank you. Lois and Sammy are straight on to their second patient of the morning. So we've got an update here. Um, it says, took an overdose. Oh, my God. Right. One and a half weeks ago, has been in hospital for this, but burning up and sweating right side. Yeah. Bless her. Hello. So what's happened? Start from the beginning and tell us everything what's happened and why we're here. Right. Yeah, is that since Friday? Did you say? Yeah. Have you seen anyone over the weekend or no? She's got to yeah. Right. Yeah. Have you had any paracetamol? Yeah. Cool, 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 cool. When was the last time you took that? I just took two this morning. And you've definitely been passing the urine, okay? It's not dark in colour, strong, and like it doesn't have a. No. It smells, yeah. Where is this pain? You alright, show me. I'm going to have a feel of your tummy, is that OK? Yeah, I'm going to start on this side first, if it's only that side that's hurting. Any pain there? Does it hurt? Where, when I press there, where does it hurt? Yeah. Where I'm pressing? Yeah. Oh. Um, right, OK, when was that? That was last Friday. Friday. And did you end up in hospital? Yeah. Yeah, OK. When did you come out of hospital? Did anything trigger off the overdose then? I've had Right. Were the police involved? Yeah. Yeah. What's parts in place for that, then? So things are happening kind of in the background and... Sure. Yeah. So when loads of different services are involved, sometimes things take a little bit of time, don't they? Right. Any chance that you could be pregnant? Possibility. Mm -hmm. Sorry? Possibility. It is a possibility. Yeah. Right. Have you done a test? When was your last period? Last one, so I was just waiting for... Are you meant to be your one now? Right. Everything's checked out absolutely fine. Do you think it's just failing? Um, to be fair, it could be. Um, if you're getting that flank pain, it could be a kidney infection, it could be a urine infection. Um, or if there's a possible chance of pregnancy, then obviously that kind of needs ruling out as well. Yeah. Are you happy to come to the hospital? Yeah. Yeah, because you've got other stuff going on, like you've obviously had this assault and things like that, you had the overdose. Um, it could be, like, you could be having, like, an ectopic pregnancy just with that right-sided pain. So we'd, it's probably best for us to go and get that completely ruled out. Could be something as simple as a kidney infection, a urine infection, three days antibiotics, and you'll be right as well. Uh, but we need to... There's other stuff going on, isn't there, that's all. Yeah. You usually look better than this. <laughs> So do we. Don't worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> right, tell me when you're ready, love. Yeah, just ready when you are, Sam. And these eyelashes as well, not them with these, they're going to wax. Man, I'm as well. I woke up this morning and said, I yeah. must lay like that, me, because I wake up in the line. Right. Uh, I know. What happened there? And then if you don't mind talking about it. Yeah. Come round, but. Yeah. And then I fell asleep. Mm. And I up no clothes on Never. You can't remember? I can't remember. Because <gasps> I've always trusted, like, 
But you, you have no reason not to, though, do you? Like... Yeah, well, I the patient will be assessed by doctors in A&E. Another sad one, another mm. touching one. It just shows how common it is now. Again, like. yeah. two jobs, another violence. Mm. It's shocking, isn't it? Yeah. You can't even, like, trust people. It's the ones who, that you're supposed to have the trust in that always mm. hurt you the most. Middlesbrough 331. Yeah, Middlesbrough 331. Um, are you girls OK after this job over? Yeah, we're all good, thanks for asking over. That's OK, girls. And once you press clear, just head back to the station, get yourselves um, well deserved coffee. Um, and if you need us, you know where we are over. That's lovely, thanks, Claire. I don't know what I'd do if you turned up at my house like that, you know. Being a victim of abuse, you, you do carry it, you carry it every day and it'll never go away. When you've been betrayed by someone who should be the one protecting you and care for you, and then you attend someone who, in this very similar position, that really, like, triggers you to, to want to do more for them. I don't want anyone to ever have to feel how I felt. That's why I joined the job, so I, I could do that and make a difference that way. Empathy is a big part of the job. I carry people's pain, I carry people's sadness, I carry their thoughts, their worries. And, you know, and I think, how can I help them? Coming to work helps my mental health because I know that I'm making a difference. Because when I was in that position, all I wanted was someone to help me. I do love a palm oil. I got a kid's palm oil the other day, and it was like a seven inch pizza box full. Yeah, we use a place in Gisborough, and their, their palm oils are massive, and they're dead thick as well. The only downside to them is sometimes it can be a bit heavy on the bechamel sauce. Yeah. Pineapple is the way forward. Pineapple on a palm oil? I'm not having pineapple on a palm oil. The only thing that pineapple deserves to be on is pineapple or fruit salad, that's it. Gammon? Pineapple and gammon? Even that, I think, is a bit weird. Why? No. Oh. It's a proper northern thing, though, isn't it, Greg's? Greg's sausage buns. Oh, yeah. Oh, they are nice. Like, I could eat about five. <laughs> You're too small, <laughs> It's not cheap and nasty, but it's yeah. cheap and mint. <laughs> <laughs> Ambulance service, is the patient breathing? She is, yeah. She's just had a fall, she's hurt her hip. Is she still on the floor at the moment? Two gentlemen have managed to get her up and sit her off right. Middlesbrough 330. Yeah, Middlesbrough 330. Abby, I'm passing you a job in Billingham Town Square. If they'll send a TSB, stay free response. The lady said she was dizzy and she fell over. Ah, oh, that's lovely, Claire. Thank you very much. Paul and Abid are the nearest available crew to the patient. They are 11 minutes from the scene. We want a 64-year-old, Rosalind. She's had a fall and she can't get up. Got her sat on the face. I was just thinking that. Hello. Is it Rosalind? Hello. I'm Abid. Can I have a sit here next to you? Is that all right? OK, so what happened then, Rosalind? Yeah. I'd take my dog off the rail. <laughs> Lily spotted another dog that way. Right, OK. She's only two, so oh, yeah. she's so still a, a little bit of a handful. So she pulled me and I went straight down onto my hip. Right. Did you black out at all? No, but I went dizzy. You went dizzy. dizzy. Did you go dizzy before you fell? No. Or afterwards? Afterwards. Oh. Right. OK, and which hip is the pain in? In your right hip, OK. Did you feel any crunch or anything like that when you got home? You went down. Apparently, somebody heard a crunch. Someone heard a crunch. OK. Yes. No problem. Okay. How bad's that pain while you sat there, not doing anything? Very. very it's quite painful. painful. If you could give me a score, it was 0 out of 10. So zero is no pain and 10's the worst you've ever had. Eight. In eight. Okay. But I do think it's going to have to be a trip into uh, North Tees, so we'll pop you in. 
Are you uh, allergic to anything? No. no. So just cats. Just cats. <laughs> <laughs> OK, it is going to be a little bit painful while we get you on there. But once we've got you on there, that's it. There's no more moving. Yeah. OK, there's the gas in there. Take some big, good puffs on that. It's, it's free. Right. Are we ready, Roz? That's it. Big, deep breath in. Big, deep breath on the gas. That's it. Well done. Well done. That's it. You're nearly on, Rosalyn. Take another big, deep breath. That's it. There we go. OK, right. We'll take as much of that gas as you need. Can I get this under there, my love, to give you the best support? It's a little bit better. Yeah, OK. You didn't bang your head, did you? No. No, OK, that's good. I'm daft enough as it is. <laughs> I was asked if the two men that picked me up were dishy. I said, not really, but I hope the ambulance <laughs> men <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be a little bit bumpy, unfortunately, Rosalind. OK? Yep. Be as gentle as I can, but I make no promises. To be expected with these roads from here. And Paul's driving. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Right, little tin can, yeah. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Rosalind will be assessed at North Tees Hospital to see if her hip is broken. Take a look, guys. That's it. <laughs> I've got a further emergency for you. If you're standing by, I'll pass it through to you over. Seems to be picking up now, doesn't it? 329, thank you. I've got a job for you, please. This one is for a 47-year-old female who's taken an overdose. Yeah, it's getting a bit busy. Thank you, Rebecca. There's another one coming in as well. Middlesbrough 331, I've got an emergency call for you when you're ready. Um, we're travelling you over to Stockton. For a 28-year-old female. Patient's 31 weeks pregnant. Um, She's collapsing. Let's go a cat, Oh, bless you, yeah, course, thank you, over. Middlesbrough 331, Lois and Sammy, and the other crews on the day shift have already responded to 196 incidents. Now, we are experiencing a high demand at present, therefore can't give you an estimated time of arrival. The North East Ambulance Service are receiving 200 calls an hour. No, if it's just the one that he's, that he's stabbed himself with, are we not? So you, he was moving about 20 minutes ago and now he's not moving. It's really important that we'll try and work out if there's any chance that this gentleman's alive, OK? So I just want you to... Are you next to him? Yeah. Can you see his chest moving up and down at all? He's been a fight in the street with a baseball bat. Um, right, okay. He's been about seven people. Oh, right. But he's been headbutted in the face and blood's coming from his nose and his eyes. I wish I could teach people just to be nice. Have you seen they're putting baseball bat in a machete now? Oh, you're joking. Hey, Rosie, it's been a funny all day today. 331. Yeah, Middlesbrough 331. Yeah, can I just have an update on the patient? This patient was uh, having contractions every two minutes. Oh. In labour, but not quite ready to birth, bless her. Oh, that's amazing. Oh, she and baby didn't come because um, it would have been a lovely delivery for you girls. Absolutely, I know. I said, oh, it's a shame. She might have named it after one of us. <laughs> well, they could have named it Lois, Sammy, Claire. <laughs> so then it was you two and me. <laughs> Sounds like a lovely name to me. Lovely that. name, that <laughs> quadruple barrel name. <laughs> it would be a beautiful name. <laughs> Oh, bless her. Well, at least we've got um, to take her to the hospital and she's um, getting <laughs> taken care of. Thanks very much, over. They're my little people out there on the road and I'm looking after them and I feel responsible. So I try and take care of them. They're like my work family. We're there for each other, we care for each other. And I love knowing that if there's a bad job, if all there's a good job, that we sit and talk to each other. Thank you. 
It's Tuesday morning. Across the northeast, ambulance staff are clocking on to take over from the night shift. Has somebody just left their seat? Because it's lovely and warm. <laughs> there are 176 resources available today. And getting ready for their shift are crewmates Ollie and James. Can you? Dispatch officer Claire will be looking after crews across Teesside today, including Lois and Sammy. 331. Morning, Middlesbrough 331. How are you both this morning over? Well rested and <laughs> ready to <a> rumble. <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. Well, let's hope we'll have a nice day. And I'll give you a shout when we're ready. Perfect. Thank you, Claire. Hope you have a good day too, over. Oh, thanks, Sammy. Squirrel. Station mascot. There he is. <laughs> Jeffrey! <laughs> Hello! You talking to the squirrel? No. <laughs> three to eight. Hi, I'm going to spend three to eight. Um, I've got an emergency call coming through for you. Um, so we'll get the call for a 69-year-old female ringing with central chest pain. Yeah, thanks, Claire. That's all received. Paramedic Ollie and trainee James are 14 minutes away. Hello. What's your name, oh. first of all? Marie. So, tell us what's going on today, lovely. Well, I went out last night Yeah. Uh, with friends, and then I got a sharp pain in my chest, and then I got a pain, like, in big in my arm. OK. And it, that played on for about two hours. And they were saying, phone an ambulance. I said, I don't want to phone an ambulance. I'm all right. <laughs> anyway, when I phoned the ambulance this morning, she said the ambulance would be about an hour. I said, well, I'm still in my jammers. She said, <laughs> said, don't worry. She said, they're off and look at you. What are you wearing? <laughs> It will, it's fine because you yeah, don't get reduced healthcare service just because you're still in the jammers. <laughs> yeah. So have you still got this pain now? Not as painful as it was last night. Not as painful as it was last night? No. OK. So you weren't boogieing on the dance floor? No. 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 That's on Saturday night. That's Saturday. All right, Saturday nights. <laughs> Monday night's a calmer night, is it? Yeah. Fair enough, then. I think it was a shock of winning the bingo. Oh, did you? Right, okay. you win. That was only 20 quid. Oh. It was a line. No. You know what I mean? Still a win? Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. So James is just going to do some checks. Oh, all right. OK. Two, three, four. Oh, sounds like you got a doggy. Yes. What kind of dog have you got? Uh, he's got a greyhound that he oh. races. Yeah. Races? Got a whippet. A whip oh. Yeah. And we've only had her about two months, but she's uh, like a bullet. Yeah. <laughs> what need you do for me? All right, just relax your hands. All right, stay nice and still. No talking, I'm moving for 30 seconds, all right? Here we go. Hello. You must be husband here. <laughs> Hello. Hello there. That's Alan. That's Alan. Hi, Alan. How are you doing? Uh, this young lady, I don't know if you've met her before, she's called Marie. Yeah. Um, she pesters me now and again. Does she? <laughs> yeah. She seems like the pester in time. Yeah, she is. I've been hearing about your race dogs. Oh, she's been telling you about the <laughs> flying machine. Right, Marie, can I just have a little listen to your yeah, breathing? Is that all right? Is that its name? <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, Ragged Ralphie, the whippet. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh Marie's baby, the ground. OK, OK. okay. All right, superb. You've got just on that left side, you've got just a little bit of what we call rubbing going on that I can hear. So your ECG's fine. There's nothing on that that's alarming for me. OK. I suspect you might potentially have the start of something called pleurisy, which is just... I've had pleurisy. Right. So if you've had that before, yeah. you might just be at the start of that now. Right. OK. So, what we would always say to anybody with chest pain, particularly the left side, mm. is to go to hospital and get that checked out. Um, and they'll do that, so they'll be able to do like a chest x-ray, they'll be able to have a little look and see what's going on, they'll take some blood tests just to make sure there's nothing mm. untoward. Yeah. Oh, Right, I'll see you again sometime about okay, then. two years. <laughs> go on, look, I'll <laughs> public displays of affection. Bye. I feel like a fraud now. Why? Because that's why I didn't want to go in hospital last night. Why? 
because I wasn't that bad. Well, you're still not that bad, but you've got something there that needs looking at. It was just when I was bad last night. Oh yeah. my God. Because we lost my dad in June 18. Oh, she bless just, her. He had to go out to cast camp. Right. And he had liver cancer. Oh, even, he had it 15 years, he didn't even knock. Blimey. Because my dad never went to the hospital. No. Apart from once when he had his appendix out. When we lived in Thornaby, he was, didn't have a car, he yeah. used to pedal. Thornaby twice, the eye pulling him on his bike. Right. And then he used to do his sight on the shift and come home. And then get a phone call, Eric need to get on his bike and pedal all the way back again. Yeah. He'd done that for us. Well, he was with us, yeah, I think he found the yeah. On his bike. Yeah. And he was fit as a lot. So we couldn't understand why we didn't. So I lost my sister to cancer. Yeah. Um, and she, again, she didn't know she had it. No. It was devastating. Because um, I'm autistic as well. Right. So she was the one that used to be able to so bring me down when I was having meltdowns and things. So. It's, uh, yeah, it's quite devastating to, to lose people like that. I went through the majority of my life thinking I was weird. And I didn't get my diagnosis till just before my 40th birthday. Right, that's us. It's allowed me to become more confident in what I'm doing. I know that if I'm thinking 10 steps ahead, I'm not being any different. I'm just, it's my way of doing things. Middlesbrough 331? Yeah, Middlesbrough 331. I've got emergency coming through for Billingham. Um, you go to go to a male at Central Chest Pain over. Oh, that's obviously, thanks over with mobile now. 999 mode activated. The nearest available crew is MB331, Lois and Sammy. 78-year-old Norman. Norman's a proper granddad's name, isn't <laughs> yeah. it? Oh. Oh. Hiya. You all right? So what's been happening this morning, Norman? Like a belt round my chest. Right. And when did it start, I'm exactly? So we're on Tuesday now. No, Sunday. Sunday. Sunday it started. And did Sunday. it just come on suddenly? I'm just going to undo these buttons, all right? More or less, yeah. Yeah, and what were you doing when the pain started, Norman? I wasn't doing anything. You weren't doing anything. <laughs> Maya, right to pop these stickers on, Norman? On what? On, on your chest, yeah, if you don't mind. Does that make it worse when you're moving around? What, what's happening is when I, I've got to bed on the night, I just can't settle. Right, I have okay. to get up and have a wander around. I've been down the bottom of the garden more times. Oh, bless you. Is it out nice down there, like? No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, to, you know, take my mind off it. Yeah. Oh, bless. I got the pain. Mm -hmm. I took up a couple of pharmacies the morning. Yeah. A couple of double doses. <laughs> vanished, went right. away. But this time, it's lingering. How was that pain on a scale of one to ten? Ten's the worst pain you've ever felt in your life. What number would you give it? About seven. About a seven? Yeah. There we go. This will tell us what your heart's doing. Have you always lived in Billingham, Norman? No, I used to live in Lidlubber. I used to live in the Thornsby. Oh, did, oh, did you? A yeah. doggy lad? Doggy lad. Doggy yeah. lad. <laughs> my, my dad's from Doggy. Have you ever been known to have a slow heart rate? No. No. And have you... Do you take... No, I mean, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give James Cook a ring and discuss your ECG, just because it's a bit slow, that's all. Your heart rate's a little bit slow. Is it? All yeah. Right. Well, you're a working man. I worked in the steel work, chemical oh. work. Oh, oh hi, yeah. right. Is that when you moved to Billingham? No, no, no. I'm not doing the job. Hello, it's Lois, uh, paramedical, the ambulance okay, service. Know, if it helps that yeah. Hello there. Um, I'm just wondering if you could have a quick look at an ECG for me, please. Were you married, Norman? Hmm? Were you married? Yeah. Yeah. Married in 65. How long were you married for? 
Good job, yeah. Wow. Oh. Mm. 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 Sorry. You've got cancer. Oh. You've got breast cancer. You beat it. Oh. And come back again. What was your wife's name, oh. Norman? Margaret. Margaret. Mm. Bless you. But that was a really difficult time for you. Yeah. Have you got any photos? Photos. Oh, can I? Am I all right to get it? Yeah. That's fantastic. Where were you? Oh, look at you, handsome man. That's uh, that was his beard. That's brilliant. You look like a right team. Oh, God bless her. James Cook have looked at your ECG, Norman, and they're happy for you to go to an RTs and get a rule out done. What they'll do is do some bloods and they'll just rule out anything to do with your heart. Mm. Are you happy to come with us? No. <laughs> <laughs> but you're going to, aren't you? You're going to. Do as you're told, eh? <laughs> Rest your little buns on there. Oh. Swing your legs up for us. Ooh. That's it. Ooh. How are you feeling now in yourself? Tired. Tired. So this pain started on Sunday and it's gradually got worse. Oh, Is that right? Yeah. yeah. You should have rung us on Sunday. You know what I'm saying? Keep up the barricade tomorrow and think, Maggie, it will grow. Yeah. How's that pain now? All right. What number would you give it? Oh, Brilliant. So we're going in the right direction, are we? Great. We're here now. We'll get you a chair, all right. Not that bad. It's quite a walk through at the hospital, to be fair. Oh. And with you having chest pain and. I'll just get you a skateboard. Skateboard? <laughs> Hello! <laughs> Home, you. Middlesbrough 331, can I just confirm you're clear at the hospital over there? Yeah, we're clear at North Tees. Um, we dropped this gentleman off. He had chest pain. Um, he opened up about losing his wife and he got a bit upset. Oh, that's really, really sad. No, he lost her five or six years ago to breast cancer. She got over it once and then it came back. Do you know what? You're making us fill up with tears. She's got cancer. I know. Hello. Hello. Oh, I'm hurt. <laughs> Jen, look, it's no problem. Thanks for talking to us, but in um, hard TV, over. Take care, Claire. Thank you. I'm I will. Go and have a break. I'll be fine. Do you want I'm just going outside for two minutes. Yeah, you alright? Yeah. I was diagnosed seven months ago with skin cancer. It was aggressive skin cancer. I recently went back to work and so all my emotions are running in my own head. And um, so when I'm looking into jobs, I do feel how them people are feeling. It does trigger us, it does make us more emotional. I feel for them. I feel for them. To be first full of shift back, I just feel. If you need time, just make sure you tell them. Okay. Right? Yeah, that's what well, well, can I do this job? I really think we need to talk about this. We need to talk about mental health. We need to talk about everything because we don't. I know, and then I think. just gets shut down. Just hits home because you just bury it. You do, yeah. It was just upset to hear that. Yeah. Just, just, just get you. It's been a funny day, today. <laughs> Thank you very, very much. Sorry, right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I'm on the side. Is this a patient breathing? Yes, he's breathing. Okay, is he awake? Uh, no, he's not. He's not conscious, no. He, he's had an anesthesia. I know that's what's happening, but I need to I need, I need to see him. Is, is he fitting right now? Yes, he is. How old is he? He's four. Oh, oh, cat one. Oh, it's a little four-year-old fitting. <coughs> Minutes for three, three, zero. Got a cat one response for you. Cat one response for a four-year-old little boy. Oh, yeah. Patient is currently sitting. So mother's made the call in. Mother. Yeah, no problem at all. That's received. Paul and Abid have just cleared from their third job of the shift. They are eight minutes away from the patient. Oh, my darling. 
Okay, so we've got an ambulance travel up after she's gone, so I'm going to tell you what I need you to do in the meantime. Yep. Theodore, he's called. So we've just got an update there, history of epilepsy. Oh, right, okay. So does he, is he doing what he normally does when he has a face? He doesn't usually fit like this, they're very, very minor. <laughs> oh, my God, is it? Seizure continues, we've got the status epileptic as well. Yeah. I've not had a status yet. I've had one. Hello. What's your name, Mum? <laughs> That's a good Sam? noise. Oh. So, what's happened That's then, Sam? Noise. He was diagnosed with epilepsy on, on 1st of December after a yep. year for seizure. Year for in August. In August, yeah. Now, that is the most severe since August. Since that August. He's had. OK. It was right. the real, you know, the, the full. full... He's not been well today. He's got a bit of a temperature, and I do want to give him some calcol. Uh -huh. But obviously, I just, I just absolutely blind panic. No problem. They're so Don't worry. To see on they are, of oh, course. Oh, when was the last time he had a seizure? He hasn't had a seizure since he started being medicated. Okay. Um, How long did the seizure last? Approximately. Um, just, just about twenty seconds. Of that. There you go, mum. What was that, ten Paul? Thirty-nine two. Oh, honestly, do you know what? They just they just live to try and panic Oh, of course. Over. I've got four. Don't worry. You're a glutton for punishment, aren't you? <laughs> and I just... <laughs> but he's exhausted now. Yeah. yeah. They're all tired out, they eh? Out of your door, they oh. do. Just feel so sorry for him, like. Oh, no. It's... My little boy was exactly the same. From the minute that boy was conceived, yeah. he was a problem. Forever up and down to Newcastle for scans yeah. and stuff, and then... He's probably had about 30 hospital admissions. And... It would be a pair, wouldn't it? Oh, no. <laughs> Shall we get you some medicine, yeah, eh? get you something to cool you down. Is that your tiger onesie? Yeah. Right, this is nice medicine that you like. So, That's I think... Because even though, like I say, even though he is epileptic, because he's had the febrile seizure, the issue is, is obviously, if he, if he either, one, starts, starts having more febrile seizures, even though he's had his carpal, we don't know how long it's going to take for his temperature to come down. It could also trigger a normal epileptic right. seizure as well. Um, so I think to be on the safe side, we'll pop you down to A and E okay. just to have him kind of observed for a little bit, make sure that temperature comes down and make sure he doesn't go into any more seizures. Good boy. Come on. Right. Yes. Oh, right. Right. He said it lasted approximately for 20 seconds, yeah. But that feels like the most oh. the longest time ever, does it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was much better equipped to deal with it this time though, I think. And I'm sure you hear this a lot when you visit people who have seizures for the first time I really didn't think I was losing it. Oh, I thought he was dying. My, my eldest is getting investigated for seizures, and I think it just kind of helps reassure some people that they're not the only person, and we are humans, and we know kind of how they feel. And, and to them, obviously, when, they, when, when their child's sick, it's the worst time of their life, isn't it? It's, That's it, yeah. You know, and I think if you can kind of reassure them and say, look, you know, I've been where you are, or I know exactly where you're coming from kind of thing. Definitely. I've been tearing down the walls. I've been kicking down the doors. I've been burning all the boxes. Because I'm a slave to only truth. I'm as oh, wild eventful. as eventful. You can't keep me from the mountains. My autism doesn't tend to show at work because of the constant masking. It's the last 40 years or so of learning social etiquette cues. Do you know what I mean? I don't know if you but I told you. Constantly re-evaluating new environments, new people. It's almost like, as my mum used to say, there's nothing better than getting home and taking off your bra. 
And that, for me, masking is like taking off my bra at the end of the day. It's just that sense of relief where I can go, I don't need to mask anymore, I can now be myself. That period at the end of the shift is essential for me to be able to come back and do it again. I'm so excited for the lighter nights and oh, yeah. summer and stuff. Oh, I am. I'm excited for summer nights in your back garden. Yeah, I am. <laughs> yeah. We'll be having some parties in there. You'll never get rid of me. You see yourself in, in a lot of patients when you've been through similar situations in life. Here we are still just people like they are. But we can put that behind us to help the patient. So at the end of the shift, you know, you're going to take those jobs home. It just makes it easy knowing that you've you've done it with your best mate. I can't believe how water balls have been dispatched. They'll be coming on the same delivery. Oh, my God, on the same street. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the little things. Details of organisations offering information and support are available on the BBC Action Line website.